What is the most significant challenge that society faces today? In this heavily social media driven world, the phantom confidence gained from the loss of self identification is proliferating. Many people no longer put an effort to think or fact check, giving into the bandwagon mentality. Hypnotized by the uniform support, they delude themselves to be the pioneers of their subjective assertions. How did you spend your last two summers? I delved into self-studying AB Calc AB and APCSA, as well as some Coursera courses. Embracing my Rakhine ethnicity, I exchanged res recipes with friends and bonded with my mom through learning to cook Rakhine fish soup noodle. The icing on top was giving myself time to reread Frankenstein. What historical moment or event do you wish you could have witnessed? Hatshepsut's rise to power. In a culture that only allows males as their pharaohs, I am eager to witness how she holds her authority as she sits atop her own throne, establishing her story. At the same time, I desire to unravel the motivations and the mechanisms behind her actions. Briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities, a job you hold or responsibilities you have for your family. I used to set aside two hours daily to help my friend who was struggling with SAT math. He initially made numerous mistakes and we always went over them together. I also valued the process since I got to review formulas I'd forgotten. As he gradually improved, I felt gratified. Name one thing you're looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. I'm a social butterfly that thirsts for deep dialogues with people. Communities like Stanford Asian American Activism Comedy, SAAAC, will expose me to meaningful activities that will positively impact our communities as well as broaden my outlook with constructive dialogues from critical thinkers of differing perspectives. The Stanford community is deeply curious and driven to learn in and out of the classroom. Reflect on an idea or experience that makes you genuinely excited about learning. Throughout my high school years, my heated friendly arguments with a friend of mine at school before COVID-19 are like regular occurrences for those around us. Our discussions are like free entertainment for them. It is good to know that both of us are extremely strong-willed people who didn't want to give up. Sometimes our discussion would stop for the day when one of us would say something like, you just continue to argue with me because you don't want to believe I am making more sense. And the other person would always be like, maybe. One afternoon during lunch break, I vividly remember I was sitting at the back of the music room once again, having another discussion with my friend. I don't specifically remember what I was advocating for in that discussion. But what I do remember is, I wasn't as informed as I thought I was on the topic. And it bugged me a lot because it had his smug face on. With a determination to have a stronger fruit hole when I continue our discussion the next day, I spent hours at home googling and watching videos on YouTube. It's an endearing memory in retrospect. Our constant exchange of views led to my habit of researching in depth with countless tabs open whenever I become interested in anything. They also reinforce my belief that knowledge is power, thus fueling my desire to keep learning and discovering new information. Virtually all of Stanford's undergraduates live on campus. Write a note to your future roommate that reveals something about you or that will help your roommate and us get to know you better. To my future buddy, Taylor Swift is my musical religion. Anytime a notification pops up about Tay Tay, I'd be like a mosquito buzzing around your ear as you sleep. And if I find out that you like Taylor Swift as well, you would probably see my eyes shining like in the novels. I'm the type of person who would suddenly want to go out, so I decide to put on the first set of clothes I see and be gone from others' line of sight in the next minute. That's why, if you need a friend at random times to go for a snack, hang out, or study dates, I will most likely be down for it. When I'm free for a bit, you will either find me gaming, reading, or taking a power nap. 
If by any chance you want to join me to game together, my reaction would be hell to the yes, since I have made many good friends through games. At times when studying, you may or may not hear the sound of a person dying mentally, me groaning quietly with my head on my notes. Giving me a pat on the shoulder would gain a free pass from me for you to chuckle at me. I probably will join in as well. I look forward to getting to know you and creating countless memories together. There may be bumps along the way in our relationship, but I'm sure it will be a smooth ride overall. Love, Ella. Tell us about something that is meaningful to you and why. The journey of Frankenstein will always hold an important piece of my heart captive. Throughout the whole story, I felt pity and immense frustration for all that Frankenstein had to go through just because he did not fit into the ideals of his creator and father, Victor Frankenstein. I ought to be thy Adam, but I am rather the fallen angel whom thou drivest from joy for no misdeed. Through these words, Frankenstein's devastation about being abandoned by Victor for no justified reason is clearly conveyed. He believes that he should be Victor's beloved creation, like Adam is for God. However, he is being treated like Lucifer, the fallen angel, without committing any sins like Lucifer. Mary Shelley is a genius because these words spoken by Frankenstein resonate strongly with each of her readers differently. Personally, my mind was consumed with the thoughts of unloved children and legalizing abortion. Sometimes, more often than I'd like, children are brought into this world unwillingly by their parents when abortions are illegal. These innocent children would wonder if they were mistakes by their parents since they are unloved and maybe even abused while they look at other happy children. When they grow up, they may have a mentality that even if their own parents don't love them, who would? The luckier ones would discover self-love, but the scars would still remain. No babies nor children should have to resonate with Frankenstein's experience of abandonment. To prevent such heart-wrenching circumstances, abortion should be legal.